risky business for the first time ever. Um, so I am a 90s kid, uh, obviously female. Uh, to clarify, I did go to high school in Illinois, though I'm not from there, uh, just to get my biases out of the way. And uh, if you're looking at, so for people who haven't seen any of my 90s kid reviews, I'm just looking at movies to see whether or not I felt that they held up. And as it turns, is it portrays to this one? I don't think that it did hold up for me. I honestly really didn't like this movie altogether that much. Uh, so hang on, let me explain. It came out in 1983. It was directed by Paul Brickman. Um, I think it was his debut film, and it stars a young Tom Cruise doing that boxer dance scene to that old-time rock and roll, which is parodied all over the place, and uh, I do think the filmmaking was good. I do think the acting was good. Uh, the first thing I noticed about the film was that the soundtrack is so clearly Tangerine Dream, which is my favorite band, so that was good too. There are a lot of good aspects to that film. I love that uh, Curtis Armstrong and Bronson Pinot, I think is how his name is pronounced, are in it. I do love the sentiment that uh, Curtis Armstrong tells Joel, who is Tom Cruise's character, quote, sometimes you just gotta say, what the, make your move. Joel every now and then saying what the brings freedom freedom brings opportunity opportunity makes your future and that honestly is true but that's actually kind of one of the things that I found a problem with in this movie is that I so I take notes and I just kept writing this movie is so Reagan era <laughs> which is probably why that someone in who's born in the 90s and you know who's growing up in the 2000s and is currently in 2020 can look around and say, you know what, F Reagan era, hate Reagan era, nothing about Reagan era is good to me now. Uh, don't like Reagan, don't like Reaganism, don't like Reaganomics, nothing about Reagan is make, brings me to my happy place. So obviously that is a bias on my part and might be a really big reason why I didn't particularly like this film. Another reason is I do sometimes read reviews to see um, how people, other people feel it holds up, but mostly it's from point of view of people who were teens when they first saw it to see how they feel about it now. And I read this one, you know, this dude is maybe a baby boomer, maybe Gen X, not quite sure. Um, he was old enough to vote um, for Reagan in 84. So he that would make him older than my parents. Um, was saying that he thought this movie was really feminist. First of all, I don't think he knows what the word feminist means. <laughs> but secondly, no. I think when I was reading that, it just kind of bothered me because in my notes, I wrote in capital letters, this movie is sexist AF. <laughs> so obviously, I might be coming from this of a different point of view of being a female watching it, um, of course, we all come in with our with uh, our perceptions, and that's kind of unavoidable. So I'm going to kind of explain a few things about what sort of bothered me about this movie, but I also want to hit on some of the plot details about the film before I get into it, so you can kind of see where I'm coming from a little bit better. So Joel is a kind of wealthy white boy living in an affluent neighborhood in um, the Chicago metropolitan area. Um, like I said, I went to high school in uh, Illinois as well, though I lived on the Illinois side of St. Louis, which is a whole different, whole different thing. Um, so definitely no, why are all these teen movies in Illinois? Like, like they're, they're all in Illinois. I don't know the attraction to Illinois. It's not that great. Um, so his parents go out of town and we learn that um, he is kind of really obsessed with the idea of having sex. He's definitely a virgin. Um, and we see this through various, uh, in the beginning, through various um, dream sequences that he has. And I think that does a good job of the camera work into getting us into his shoes and kind of seeing where he's coming from. Although I think it's kind of relatable for most high schoolers. Um, so that, but it, they did do a very good job of that. And uh, we see that um, he is worried about getting into college and his father has set him up with an appointment with someone from Princeton and I literally wrote, if this little gets into Princeton, I'm gonna be pissed. But of course, since they're setting it up, he's going to. 
mm, frustrating, I'll get to it. And um, we see that you know, he has a group of friends He's uh, that they play poker and smoke cigars and they're high school students. I don't know. Um, and ugh, this bothers me. Um, he, his friend uh, calls a sex worker for him as kind of a joke and that person shows up and we get a bit of an awkward scene. Um, I saw some people kind of saying that this was a bit of a homophobic scene. I just saw it as a teenager just being kind of uncomfortable and not really sure what to do. I didn't think it was bad. Um, so anyway, this particular uh, sex worker leaves me down before giving Joel uh, the number of someone that they think that Joel would find more appealing, I guess. And uh, so Joel ends up calling this person, and during the intermission between them arriving, uh, we get a, another dream sequence where we learn that Joel has, I don't know, very Reagan era, again, I'm going to use that term so much, um, equates having premarital sex with, like, ruining his life. I, I don't know, the 80s were weird, man. So anyway, that particular sex worker arrives. Person is Lana. They do engage in intercourse. Joel loses his virginity, and he doesn't have enough money to pay her in the morning. So then he lives to go get lives. He leaves to go get money, and then she steals this like crystal egg that's his mother's. That's very expensive, and um, he has to track her down. He ends up saving her from her pimp, whose name is literally a slur. And then um, more shenanigans ensue. He saves her from the pimp again. Um, and then she ends up killing his father's Porsche, and we, which is like really Cameron Fry from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> and so they end up having to raise money to fix the Porsche. And so what ensues in our third act is a massive party where um, all these white rich boys from his school have to or come to engage in sex with Lana's very beautiful young uh, Chicago sex workers, because that's what sex workers look like, definitely. Okay, um, and how are none of these boys able to just have a girlfriend and have sex without having to pay for it? I don't, okay, it's a whole, that's a whole other thing. Anyway, so they are able to raise money for the Porsche, he gets the egg back, um, he settles things with the pimp, and he gets into Princeton. Okay, rant time. <laughs> Did I mention this movie is so Reagan era? Like, premarital sex is bad, and like, so many teens are brainwashed to believe this, and it's just really sad. And I know I mentioned that, but I really need to reiterate it. It's just so flawed. Um, that used gum analogy is absolutely disgusting, by the way. Just uh, don't believe the lies. Don't believe the lies, children. And it shows women in three different roles as a mother as an obstacle with the woman that um, works at the school that kind of prevents Joe from being able to like make up a test or something like that. And then as a tool to lust after. And essentially a boy needs a woman to become a man and go through that sort of rite of passage of losing a virginity, which for some reason our society still thinks is a rite of passage and it's really not. But I'm gonna get more into that in a second actually. And um, the mom kind of represents childhood, whereas Lana represents adulthood, which Joel is really kind of afraid of and worried about, which, I mean, all high school seniors are totally normal. Um, so that's why he can't just have, like, a freaking girlfriend and work on a relationship so he can earn that lovemaking scene and that true rite of passage. Uh, no, 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 he is an 80s man. He is an entrepreneur. He's a capitalist. He... Uh, gets to pay for his first time and skip all of the work, which they at one point kind of essentially compare dating to prostitution, which is a whole other issue I have. Um, and he gets the danger and the thrill and the metaphor for all of his um, fears, but he ends up just totally failing upward. And this movie is, like, really sexist. Like, in the 80s, women were just getting the opportunity to get into the work. And at that place, the workforce was still very unfair. And this movie depicts women in, like, one role here. And their job is to be literal sex workers. And are still working for men who are, like, the people in charge. And women are just essentially just property and tools to aid in men's efforts and it shows the value of woman as providing this invaluable service which is sex and that's it that's really all women have to offer well 
that that's not empowering yo and another thing that bothered me is like after joel loses his virginity he becomes like really confident spoilers for life that ain't real sorry like if you are um self-conscious and awkward like yo getting laid doesn't fix that <laughs> um and as i said he failed up and learned nothing I showed you can skip school, you can make money. He said he earned 18000 in one night, which he didn't work for at all. Lana and the other women did everything, but Joel profited from it. And that's essentially the American dream. <sighs> Don't work, make money. And as I said above, like it bothers me really that he got into Princeton. He has, it said a 3.14 GPA and he's in the 84th percentile. I mean, that's good. Um, don't think badly if that's around where you are or were, but like that's not Princeton material. I was did way better than that, and I was certainly nowhere near Ivy League material. So it, like you can do well, but like that you can do great even, but even great is barely Ivy League material. And so all in all, it's a well made movie. It's a well acted movie that dance is parodied, as I said, all over the place. But if I'm being honest, I found it really annoying, and I didn't think that it had a positive message. Um, the Joel comes off as like anyone's like, uh, prequel to that Wall Street movie. Just pick a character, any character. That's how they came up. Um, and it's yay capitalism, yay masculinity. And just as a chick, I don't know, I just wasn't into it. And normally I don't watch movies from that perspective, even like I'm female, but I could, you know, I can relate to male characters, no problem. But when it's just being like, shoved in my face here's what women do here's what we have to offer it's just i'm very annoyed with it um and i'm very happy that there aren't movies really like that anymore <laughs> so as as watching this do i think it holds up in terms of filmmaking yes in terms of substance no not really and i know most people probably disagree with me and probably really like this movie it just really wasn't for me I don't know how do you, how do you feel about it where where what am I reading too much into <laughs> thank you so much for watching have a really good day